do this kind of, okay, buddy, we're going to take you to Yamaraj. And they were just getting ready to haul him away. And the Vishnu Dudas show up and they go, oh, no, 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 leave him alone. He's ours. And the Yama Dudas are going, what? This guy was a thief his whole life. He did so many terrible, sinful activities. He even stole the jewel from the temple. Now we're taking him away. And the Vishnu Dudas said, no, no, no. Lord Vishnu told us that when he entered the temple, uh, to appreciate the wonderful form of the, of the Lord, he washed the floor of the temple with the, the mud from his feet from a holy place. Huh? So the, the Lord accepted this one act of unintentional devotional service as sufficient cause for liberation. Or how about Ajamyo? Ajamil was born in a nice Brahmana family and then he fell down and uh, married a prostitute and did all kinds of nonsense his whole life. But he did one thing right. He named his son Narayana. And so at the end of his life, he was dying and the, the Yamadudas were coming, you know, and they were going to drag him away. And he was calling for his son. Narayan, Narayan. But since he happened to name his son Narayan, he was chanting the holy name. And immediately the Vishnu Dudas came and said, no, no, you can't take him. He, he, he's uh, purified by his accidental chanting like that. And then they gave him the benediction that, okay, because you chanted sincerely, this is called Namabhas, the reflection of the holy name. It's not even the, the pure holy name. It's just the reflection of the holy name, chanted by accident. Huh? What was that store in, uh, in Mexico? Grocery Rama or something like that? Super Rama. Super Rama. <laughs> Everybody who goes to that store probably goes back to Godhead. You know? <laughs> Wasn't there a beer company in Santiago? A beer company? Brahma. Brahma, Brahma beer, that's right. That's right, you see it everywhere. Well, Brahma, they go to the impersonal Brahman. It's already there. Well, maybe. Anyway, uh, the, so the devotee, sorry, the uh, Vishnu Dudas said, okay, Ajamil, you get a special benediction because you chanted the reflection of the holy name, Namabhas then uh, you don't die now. You get an extra term of life in which to clean up your act. <laughs> so he recovered from his illness. And then as soon as he got his health, he immediately left home. He went to Rishikesh, I think it's described, a you know, holy place. And there by the side of the Ganges, he chanted the holy name for the rest of his life. And then finally, a Vaikuntha airplane came and picked him up and took him to the spiritual world. So this is even, even a devotee like that. Huh? They get to go to Vaikuntha. But only the pure devotees get to go to Goloka Vrindavan. Only the pure devotees get to be engaged in the intimate loving service of the Lord. Only those who develop a spontaneous loving attachment to the holy name and chanting. Uh, uh, through service attitude. Uh, they get to go to the holy dom, the highest uh, holy dom of Vrindavan or, or Mayapur, Namadvi, the abode of Lord Chaitanya. So one should try to develop this service attitude. Service attitude means I give. I am an eternal spirit soul. My existence is guaranteed forever. I don't have to worry about eating, sleeping, taking care of my body. All of this is already uh, uh, destined by my karma. And uh, I don't have to uh, work hard like a dog or, or a donkey. I can simply um, chant the holy name, preach this process of devotional service to whoever will listen, and Krishna will take care. Krishna will take care of me. You know, you, you think 
people in the West have this idea that, that India is like so full of poverty and stuff like this, you know? Because just because in the, in the Western news media they present these bogus statistics like the average Indian makes 42 cents a day or something like that. Well, yeah, 42 cents a day is going to buy you like enough to eat and enough clothing and, you know. So you go in India and you go to these places called dharmashalas. Dharmashalas are like dormitories uh, that are uh, uh, given by rich men for the good of the society. And the sadhus go and live there. So you go to some place like Dwarka or Vrishikesh or Nainital, Badranath or any place along the Ganges or along the, the Jamuna River, uh, the outside of the cities out in the country. And you'll find so many sadhus living there. And somehow or other they get their chapatis and somehow or other they get some veggies and somehow they get some clothing, discarded clothing laying by the side of the road or whatever and they patch it up and they fix it up and somehow they're living. Uh, they're walking up and down India. In the summertime they go into the Himalayas. And in the wintertime they come down South India where it's nice and warm. Uh, they're, they're, they're not inconvenienced at all. They're just like, they're just like living uh, very easily. And what are they doing? chanting the holy name, performing devotional service. And yeah, there's, there's more than a few who are kind of nonsense, you know. <laughs> but there are many sincere devotees among them. So it's possible to live this way. I have to admit it's more difficult in the West, but it's still possible. I did it. I did it. When I retired in 2001, you know, I went to, the, to uh, Hawaii and I just chanted and chanted and chanted until I made it, until I realized Krishna. Then I just sold everything. By that time, my unemployment was up and I was out of money. So I just sold everything. And then I started traveling around. And somehow or other, Krishna took care of me. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't explain it now if you asked me how it happened. How did Krishna take care of me? Well, somehow or other, through other devotees and friends and students and people who cared somehow or other, uh, I always had a place to stay. I always had food to eat. I never starved, you know. Uh, it was astonishing. It was amazing. And every time I was totally out of money and everything was, you know, falling apart and uh, there was a total, total emergency, I was out of everything, then boom, something would happen. Krishna would arrange something. And it happened so many times again and again. And we also see now that we're preaching. The more that we preach, the more Krishna takes care of us. Uh, so we just want to expand our preaching more and more. That's our goal in life. Because we know the secret that as soon as Krishna sees, oh, they're preaching sincerely, they're trying to convince people according to the real purport of Srimad Bhagavatam, then he takes care. Uh, not that we're rich or, you know, I mean, you should see our old truck. It's so funky. <laughs> but we have a nice house. We have plenty to eat. We're living in a beautiful place. We saw some beautiful places today, huh? It's a beautiful country up in the Andes Mountains. And, uh, you know, people leave us alone. Nobody bothers us. I mean, really, we have quite an ideal existence. And we have lots of friends all over the world. So even if we do get run out of here, there's so many places we could go. <laughs> so we're not worried. Krishna is taking care. And uh, we have our association, and we're very satisfied in that association. That's the life of a devotee. <laughs>